Okay, so let's get going, everybody. Um, I am your host for today. My name is Juana Lefter. I am a managing partner at NNC Services. I will be your host, but my wonderful colleagues, Loredana, Laura, and Daniel are going to share with you a lot of interesting knowledge about automated prospecting. As a host, I would love to offer you some cookies and some beverages, but unfortunately, Zoom doesn't have this option yet. But when it will have it, we will do it. <laughs> uh, so this workshop is part of our B2B Academy workshop series. B2B Academy is a learning platform that us at NNC launched last year at the at the beginning of the pandemic, actually, as a reply to a lot of people out there requesting yeah. us to equip them with um, a lot of um, new, you know, knowledge and tools to uh, use cool? in order to uh, navigate this shady, you know, waters we are seeing. Uh, Please mute your microphones. Uh, come off mute only if you want to ask a question. Feel free to use the chat window um, whenever you want. Um, also, uh, as part of B2B Academy, we have the B2B prospecting uh, bootcamp, which is really related to the topic of the workshop today. The next session starts on October 7th, and we have a special uh, discount code for all the participants who are joining us today. So make sure you stay until the end to, to get your own discount code. Okay. Um, I have a famous, um, there's a famous quote I like about automation, which is actually from um, business, uh, Israeli business management guru. His name is Eliyahu Goldratt. And he says, automation is good so long as you know exactly where to put the machine. So with this in mind, I'm going to introduce you to our founder, Loredana Nikolae. Loredana will walk us through the topics of today and help us all understand where and how do we put the machine in prospecting. Hi, how are you? Really nice to meet you all. It's amazing that we have uh, participants from all the corners uh, of the world. Uh, and um, I know that there are quite a bit of downsides to uh, not having live events uh, as much as we did in the past. But I think one good thing that came out of this was the fact that we can all uh, come together in such amazing events. Um, we're going to go through very quickly today why uh, we do automated prospecting and I'm a fan of prospecting so automating pro prospecting is, is my second nature. Uh, why mapping out, uh, how can you map out the process and how to do it in the uh, proper way? How can you select the right automation tools? Um, and uh, my colleagues are going to walk you through uh, a, a few demos of some of these tools um, and also how you can get most out of the LinkedIn, especially what are some of the best practices around LinkedIn automation and even more important in the B2B space, um, the retargeting for LinkedIn. Uh, and of course, how can we measure, how can we sell, how can we, you know, repeat <laughs> the, the processes that we have in place. Um, one thing that I'd like you to know is we don't mind you asking through the chat pane. If it's something urgent and you absolutely need to make a point, uh, you can also come off mute. This is supposed to be a very interactive session where everybody can participate, join, chip in with your own ideas, suggestions, best practices. Um, and we'd love to hear um, what are some, some of your own findings, if uh, this is, you know, according to your own uh, experience or not. Everything we share here is just a very, very uh, small drop from the B2B Prospecting Academy. 
uh, just to have a, a, a taste basically of what the program is about. And we do this for the B2B growth community. This is a community we founded um, when, when the pandemic started to support as many small, medium-sized businesses um, to grow, to sell during such uh, challenging times. Um, I'm the founder of NNC Services. I'm a lecturer at the B2B Prospecting Academy uh, together with Juana. I have over 20 years in marketing management for different B2B companies, but I'm an entrepreneur at heart. Um, and uh, I think we'll dive right into uh, the points. Now, what is automated prospecting? Well, it's obvious it is lead generation, demand generation, prospecting done in an automated way. To do it in an automated way, of course, you need to understand what is your current process, funnel, flywheel, whatever methodology you are using, and to put it in a process that can be uh, correctly um, executed. You cannot automate something that you don't do well, okay? So, for example, you cannot, um, any step in the process, it's best done by yourself with your own hands, then you automate it. I would not advise you to automate a process that you have not manually executed correctly, just because the same way automation can put quite a bit of volume and speed on your very well executed campaigns, it can do the same level of magnitude on your um, not so well executed campaigns. So you can multiply an error 200 times, <laughs> okay, or even more. That's why we first need to do it manually, do it really well, and then put it on, on uh, the, the autopilot. Then um, also automated prospecting uh, refers to this workflow of um, going with your buyer journey through, with, with your buyer uh, through their journey and accompanying them on each step with proper content and a proper channel on proper tools, okay? So you can do that with proper tools, but then you have to make sure it's with the right buyer on their own pace and on their own journey, okay? Don't do that just to get rid of prospecting. Uh, I've heard many, you know, contacts that they want to do the uh, uh, prospected, uh, prospecting in an automated way, just to get rid of the, um, you know, manual task of sending another email and making another phone call, sending another invite to reach out. Don't do it for those reasons. Do it as usual to add value to your own um, customer, to your own prospect. Um, now, with that in mind, uh, the prospect, uh, automated prospecting also refers sometimes to campaigns, campaigns that we conceive from, um, you know, the strategy all the way to execution and management in an automated way. Uh, and again, sometimes when we hear that someone does lead generation or prospecting in an automated way, we understand that that may lead to uh, some forecasting, some predictability in the results, and so on, okay? So automated prospecting refers to this and much more. But let's not talk so much about theory. And what I'd like to invite you is to dive right into, you know, why a company needs uh, prospecting in an automated fashion. Um, of course, some of the first things that come to mind are, you know, time savings, cost savings, getting more revenue, um, getting more time from your sales people's agenda, uh, having more data and, and making data-driven decisions, reaching out to a wider audience, and of course, uh, you know, understanding better about the intentions of your prospects. 
um, there's a ton of more um, advantages to um, automated lead generation. And we will look into the benefits maybe a bit later, but what I'd like to um, show you right now, because we mentioned this is a really practical workshop and I hope we keep it this way, that has been all the theoretical aspects <laughs> until now. So right now we're going into the uh, practical things. Um, so let's understand where it all starts. Well, it all starts as usual on a piece of paper. And when I said you really need to understand your process, you actually really need to understand it and take a you know, pen and a piece of paper and start drawing uh, based on a successful uh, um, prospecting sequence or based on your own successful experience of um, reaching out to a prospect, reaching out to a client, engaging them into a conversation, draw everything on a piece of paper, what you do in the beginning. Maybe you don't do what I um, am writing here. Maybe in day one, you just research contacts through LinkedIn. So that's gonna be your day one, researching contacts through LinkedIn. Maybe in day two, you write to three contacts on LinkedIn. Maybe in day four, if they don't answer, you pick up the phone or you email them. Or So exactly your process, you need to map it out each day uh, with all the activities. Um, this also becomes a really good way to align all of your team. So bring everyone on the same page, get them involved, you know, pass over this piece of paper um, and see, are they following the same process as you are? Do they have maybe um, a better take on this? Um, another thing that I'd like uh, to, to mention here is that most people don't know what to do past day three, four, okay? So usually it's really easy to come up with what I do in the first place, what I do in the second place, and so on. But usually when you get to day three or four, it becomes challenging. Why? Because um, even stats show that uh, over 85% of the sales people abandon the prospecting process after the first two interactions. And in fact, what the cold fact data show us is that the sales only starts after the eighth interaction. So if you don't have at least eight stages in your lead generation process, you're not doing it right and you're missing on most of the opportunities. So please map out the process and try to figure out what you do. You also don't have to hurry into this process. So maybe day one and day two, day three is too uh, narrow down, too close together. The process needs to span to at least 45 days. So the process from the moment of contacting someone, so let's say um, Steve is my prospect and from the moment I reach out to Steve, I need about 45 days and ideally even 60 days until I close a deal, okay? What that tells you is that trust is built in time with a certain number of interactions and everything can be done in a really scientific way that you close more. Even prolonging this conversation and, and the lead generation um, interactions to uh, the, the eight interaction to at least four weeks ensures that you will sell more, okay? So um, this is why I like to mention, and usually for our B2B Academy uh, courses, we mention that prospecting is not an event. We don't do it just because we need leads tomorrow. You cannot do that. I, uh, I don't encourage you to do that. Prospecting is a habit. And because it's a habit, as with any habit, you have to do it um, in a rhythm. So I advise you to do it daily, right? Put aside 
30 minutes, one hour, put it in your calendar and do it daily. And because it is a habit, you need to be very excited about it. Okay, <coughs> So I love uh, reaching out to people because that allows me to build new connections. That allows me to understand new business challenges and to add value to more businesses. You may have your own motivations, um, but this is uh, my <laughs> motivation. Um, now, that process that's on a piece of paper can turn into an automated marketing campaign. What that means is that you can actually draw based on your process, this sort of a map, we call it a workflow. You may call it, um, you know, a campaign plan, whatever. And that process translates automatically into, you know, um, maybe your buyer is filling out the form or your website what you did to register for the uh, current workshop, okay? You, you filled out a form. Then they get maybe added into a list or they get a tag or something happens in a way that you recognize that that is coming from this form and they are interested in automated prospecting. Then you send them an email in which you say, okay, so you registered to this form, Here's the details to attend, right? Uh, but we need your confirmation. They will click a link, let's say, to confirm that they're interested or to download. We, let's say, we send the registration for this event. So they will click a link to download the registration or something. We're asking for a action from that prospect, okay? Um, if they are doing the action that we ask them, then they can get into a new campaign to follow up. That's a hot lead. They did exactly what we expected on this journey, and now they became a hot lead. Uh, if they did not do this, we continue nurturing until they reach that maturity level that we desire. We want them to take this action, okay? So we continue with the flow. Um, if you allow me for a second, I will do a bit of a change here to show you how a workflow really looks like. I see we have someone from HubSpot in the call, so they will recognize this as being a HubSpot. But this is what the real campaign looks like. And this is, for example, what we use for uh, the B2B um, strategy program. Okay, so if they filled out a form, then they get added to a list. We send a confirmation email and you see here, what is the email click rate? Okay, so I immediately see that 33% of them already confirmed this. And then um, if they did the next action, okay, which is if they registered to the, this specific program, then if yes, we send them congrats, you're registered and they get into another uh, campaign and workflow. But if not, we wait for another day and we invite them again, okay? And for example, to invite them in here, we use the list from LinkedIn. So we move to the list of contacts from the email channel. We uploaded it to LinkedIn and Laura is gonna show you how to do that and we targeted them for LinkedIn, okay? And again, if they did yes, it, the, the next action, we send them the congrats. If not, we waited for another day and we send them another uh, retargeted campaign for LinkedIn. So that's a bit about how we can look at the workflow. So we take everything, we draw it on a piece of paper, then it becomes an automated process. Then you upload it into a tool like HubSpot, or we'll talk about other tools in here that can help you um, with the um, automated prospecting. One second, let me 
present again, but I wanted to show you the real case scenario because in here it's very small and I'm not sure you could see what, what is written. Uh, we mentioned tools, there's a ton of tools. Some of the tools that we love and use every day are the ones in this slide. I'm not going to talk about all of them because time is limited and I would actually love for you to see and, and get a, a demo and a feeling of some of these tools. But for example, you, you will have this presentation and the recording and please take any of these two tools, try them, test them, see how they work and so on. Some of the tools that I personally love, first of all, uh, for everybody in the call, I'm a fan of HubSpot. We use it for ourselves. We also are a platinum HubSpot partner. Um, and uh, we see quite a bit of success and there's been quite a few events around HubSpot. So if you need demos of this tool or if you are interested uh, and so on, do reach out to us. We'd love to, to support you with more information there. But for example, I love the HubSpot Prospects tool. And with HubSpot Prospects tool, what you can do is actually see which companies visited your website. And in some cases, even which contacts visited from those companies, your website. And if both fit your customer profile, you can actually connect with them and you can reach out to them and you can turn those into hot leads. Um, then I love, for example, um, Link Helper. I'm a user of Link Helper to uh, help with um, LinkedIn uh, lead generation. Your uh, Daniel is going to present you briefly this tool and some other similar ones that automate the LinkedIn conversation. Um, and for example, more recently, there's quite a bit of buzz around buyer intent. I love Zoom. I love the buyer intent from Zoom Info. So Zoom Info has an amazing tool that can show you when prospects that fit your buyer persona are ready to buy and notifies you when they're ready to buy. So when they're ready to take an action that uh, tells you they are looking for a service, a product, a tool like the one that your company is offering. Uh, but because this is sometimes a bit of an exclusive budget, the seeds start quite high in terms of pricing, lead for one one and others are coming really strong in terms of buyer intent and even small companies can afford such tools. So it's not anymore an exclusive privilege of big companies. With that in mind, I, I can present you all of these tools in the B2B Academy program we go through many tools and we try to see which one fit your specific needs. Um, but uh, now, since we are limited on time, I'm going to um, move over to um, maybe understanding if you're using automated lead generation tools. So I'm going to launch a pool, a, a poll right now to um, See, so if you can reply to this while I change the host to Daniel, that's going to present uh, some amazing tools that you can use in your day to day automated lead generation. Okay, so I see that 71% of the people in the call are, are using automated lead generation. Oh, that's amazing. That's awesome. So Daniel is our star when it comes to prospecting to us. He's actually one of our most first um, people that are not just preaching uh, prospecting automation, but he's actually using that in his day to day. So I'm gonna pass it on to him. He's quite technical. He has a technical, but also a very um, interesting business background. So he can uh, show you a few of the tools that he's using daily. Hi everyone. Uh, thank you for joining and staying with us uh, because that's uh, 
we're getting to the practical part of our uh, workshop today. Um, thank you, Lordana, for the intro. There's not uh, much I can say about uh, myself uh, other than uh, uh, I'm here for anybody that has any questions uh, regarding to any uh, tools uh, you might like to use or the ones that I'm uh, showcasing today. Um, they have made my uh, my life easier. I'm in charge of business development at uh, NNC Services. And uh, I'm also techie, so I, I, I uh, was looking for uh, things to save, uh, save on redundant tasks or, um, I don't know, uh, wasted time uh, with a repetitive uh, action, actions. So uh, to be honest, I use it for, uh, for research purposes. It's called uh, Apollo. And um, to be honest, uh, uh, I don't believe in uh, uh, the definition of cold calling uh, anymore. I, I, I think uh, you are uh, uh, you have to do a little bit of research. And so the only example that I uh, uh, one example that it comes to mind is that even when you you order a pizza uh, by phone, before you make that call, you. you have a look at the online menu at least so you know a little bit about those people it's the same with your prospects and uh, i use quite a few tools for finding out more information about their uh, uh, their companies and one of them is uh, apollo uh, and it looks something like that you can find contacts and accounts uh, it does a really nice uh, brief overview of the company of the contact or the contacts uh, LinkedIn profile or the data that they have on them. And you call, you can also program it to uh, sequence, uh, you can program a sequence to contact that, uh, uh, that person exactly like uh, Loredana was telling you earlier um, with delays between uh, uh, various actions like emails. So uh, what I can do over here is uh, just uh, go over here and I'm going to try to search for somebody. Uh, you can say Apple, for example. I searched it earlier. If I go on the company page, I see uh, a lot of information that is like area right here in front of me. I don't need to go on their profile. Um, and if I click on people over here, uh, I'm going to find a lot of employees uh, from uh, from Apple and I can click on each of them. I can have their profile at one click distance over here. So it saves a lot of time. And uh, uh, it also gathers if there's any corner of the internet, if there is uh, uh, um, some information about uh, that person, it will gather it over here and it will uh, uh, find also uh, uh, their contacts and contact uh, uh, details. This would be this would be Apollo, and I strongly advise you when you I don't know maybe you're searching for uh, uh, some uh, uh, some type of email that is uh, uh, you can find it over there, and it's uh, it eases up your uh, your time spent uh, spent online. The next uh, the next tool that I that I currently use does more or less the same thing that Apollo does, but uh, uh, as a hint, uh, sometimes you might not find it in uh, uh, in Apollo, and I use this one to uh, just uh, uh, find other type of information. And they have, um, I think, they have better filters in in my idea. So still, if I want to see over here, I'm going to for Amazon. And it's really, really uh, uh, um, detailed in terms of geography as well. Uh, I found a lot of uh, companies from a lot of countries, including Romania. So if I'm looking for here, it shows me its details and I can save it uh, um, on my profile to contact, to contact later. These uh, tools are also integrated as Chrome extensions. So I'm here on my profile. I can click on, click on the Apollo extension and I can find information that is uh, uh, stored online about me and also about NNC services, as you can see. Um, we have our uh, um, employee rate, things like that. So uh, this is something that is really useful before you make that first call, just to know exactly who you're gonna be talking to um, particularly. And uh, more on that, more on personality to be, 
to be exact, uh, is another uh, tool called uh, Crystal Nose. And it's also a Chrome extension that integrates uh, smoothly with LinkedIn. And what it allows is uh, whenever I click it, uh, if I'm on a different uh, person's uh, um, I, uh, LinkedIn profile, it automatically does an audit of their personality based on their digital footprint. In my case, um, based on the interactions I've had uh, on LinkedIn and the, uh, the content that I post and, and be actually a little bit of magic behind, to be honest, because we don't know exactly how they, how they do this, but they manage, the people at Crystal knows they manage to do uh, a, a portrait of the person uh, and uh, uh, you get all his characteristics depending on what you're, uh, in what stage you are uh, with that uh, contact. So uh, I find out that I'm a mild uh, harmonizer. I tend to be social, outgoing, empathetic, and may resist too much structure. This is, I think, 95% true about me. And you'll find this uh, uh, surprisingly uh, uh, correct about a lot of people that you, uh, that you look up on, on LinkedIn. And I can also, over here, as you can see, uh, if I want to engage with this contact, I can select over here, uh, what is the purpose of my engagement and I can get advice. So uh, how uh, I should sell to myself. Uh, I should be imaginative and empathetic uh, because he'll be imaginative and empathetic as well with a bit more of empathetic and supportive character, character which is exactly true. So I, uh, I also invite you to have a, have a look at, uh, at this tool. Uh, everything that I have showcased today is uh, also uh, uh, having a free period. So you can uh, test them for around 30 days each for, or for some few, few credits, uh, which is the case for uh, Crystal Nose, uh, Apollo and Lucia. Um, and uh, other than that, I'll be here to uh, answer all your questions if there, there are any. Thank you so much, Daniel, for all these interesting tools. Now, I must uh, confess that Crystal is our team's favorite tool. Everybody uses it, or marketers use it when they create buyer personas for strategies, or recruiters use it to analyze personalities of people we are hiring. And like uh, Daniel mentioned, it's magic. Well, actually, it's not magic. It's artificial intelligence. They actually uh, scan the entire online social presence of that person and it's really it's really good you should test it on on people you know like you know people from the families or <laughs> colleagues and uh, you'll see how it goes um, maybe one uh, just a quick uh, testimonial um crystal knows um i i've tested it multiple times when we send out an automatic campaign um, with a standard message, uh, we have about 10% reply rate via LinkedIn um, in a decent time frame, which is one, two days. Um, if we follow up and so on, uh, of course, that rate gets higher. Uh, but like at a normal message, but when we, I used the um, crystal nose and some of the participants in the B2B Academy that are also present in this call now, uh, I got nine out of 10 reply back to me in the same day and uh, this I, I can't uh, give a better testimonial for it and uh, we've linked helper what's amazing to see and and i think you will see it uh, also soon is that we started the campaign uh to promote this workshop at the beginning of september and uh we had over 50 people that are interested and registered already for this workshop in a matter of weeks, which if anybody is on B2B, on high value sales and so on, know that you cannot get 50 leads <laughs> out of an, you know, an automated campaign that you put on autopilot in just a matter of weeks, but we did that specifically so that we can showcase and, and you know, wear our own boots, <laughs> basically. Um, so, um, yeah. Yes, it, it's amazing. It's the, the power of uh, personalization and <laughs> having a very uh, custom approach. Uh, so um, use the chat window if you have any questions. We're going to have a QA and a session at the end as well. So write it down or just put it in the chat window and we'll go back to them. 
Uh, now, um, I'm going to introduce uh, our colleague, uh, Laura. Laura is going to show us how to use an amazing feature of LinkedIn, which is LinkedIn lookalike audiences for automated prospecting. Uh, this is a, an amazing feature that will help you find, you know, new high quality leads. It allows you to create, you know, the uh, matched audience segment, which gives you a lot more control on your prospecting and helps you to, you know, reach potential leads that are really similar to your best customers. So with this being said, I'm going to pass the mic to Laura. Laura, <laughs> take it away. Thank you, Juana. You already did uh, half of my intro, so it will be yeah. easier now to, Landing to ahead. start from there. Yes, thank you. thanks a lot. So hi, everyone. It's really nice to see that uh, so many of you still resisted till now with so many info. info. Uh, I'm social media and paid social specialist at NNC, and today I'm going to link what uh, Loredana and Daniel discussed about um, targeting your, uh, your uh, wanted audience. And uh, one of the steps from the prospecting could be also LinkedIn uh, remarketing or retargeting one of those uh, eight to 12 uh, steps in your touch with your prospecting that could be could mean an end of uh, a deal, could be also mean uh, a nice touch from, from LinkedIn or also other platforms, but today let's focus on LinkedIn. So today I'm gonna show you how you can do that by matching your audiences, creating a lookalike audience and um, creating a retargeting uh, audience based on what you already have. So the matched audience first, I want to start with that, is um, it's what LinkedIn can do, can help you do with what you already have. So let's say you have HubSpot, you have a list with contacts in HubSpot. LinkedIn allows you to upload it in its uh, campaign manager. And from there, it will uh, create an audience based on your, uh, your first contacts and will reach out to them via LinkedIn. So that will be another nice touch point to, uh, to your audience. Another thing that you can do, so this is the, this here on the right is the, is the uh, schema, let's say, of what you do. You have your customers, you put them into LinkedIn. This is your match in the middle. And on the right, you also can do as your next step. If you want to expand your audience, you can start from your, uh, your own and then LinkedIn uh, will uh, just expand it by creating a lookalike audience, which means that uh, it will take the main um, characteristics of your audience and will find the people who are uh, looking almost, uh, who are looking similar to what you uploaded and then um, uh, share another audience which is new with you. So you can have uh, an expanded audience. So, you can also create uh, retargeted campaigns for people who already had uh, a touch with your campaign. So this is another important step if you want to keep them uh, posted with your activities. Maybe you want just to promote a webinar like this, uh, what we're doing right now. And um, it is important to make them remember you from many other points. So I will show you later how, how you can do this. Uh, before we start uh, sharing the actual steps, I will just uh, make sure I will explain to you what I will do first. So I'll have two examples of campaigns. Uh, the first one, example one, is uh, in the case that you already have um, a database. You can also uh, have a manual list. It's also possible. But I think it's better for you if you have um, uh, more contacts to have a CRM where you can... Uh, match them by your list. So based on your list, you maybe want to create a campaign and uh, you just upload that, uh, that list on LinkedIn. And afterwards, you just create a lookalike audience to see, uh, to, to expand your, uh, your first matched audience. Another, this is when you have your own list. Another example, what you can do on LinkedIn is uh, to create a video campaign, you use a video 
and I will explain you later why it's important to use a video and uh, create an audience based on uh, LinkedIn's uh, tools. So you just uh, select manually the location, the job experience, the um, industry and so on, the company, the company name or the company size, create an, um, uh, a video campaign because with videos, you are sure, I recommend using at least 30 second videos because you are sure that people who will watch it till the end have at least some, some interest in it. And uh, LinkedIn knows that and uh, uh, records how many people watched, how many percentages of your video. Uh, based on that, uh, uh, on your first uh, campaign, LinkedIn could uh, keep in mind which people uh, watched your uh, video and uh, will uh, remember them and would be able to create an audience based on your video views. And based on that, it's another step. You can create a lookalike audience with people who are interested first in your video and then find people who are uh, uh, similar to those who are interested to your video. This I will show. Uh, I will show this uh, these steps uh, later on. But I want just first to to make sure that uh, you understand the importance of uh, tracking these people, because you can uh, uh, you can uh, see how which campaign performed well, which uh, which were the steps that uh, kept you up or down, and then take uh, decisions for uh, for your future future actions. So. I'll just uh, I'll just get to work now. I'm here in uh, in campaign manager, and uh, here are the campaigns that we're running right now. Uh, before running a campaign with our matched audience, so we're first we're starting now with our first example. We have a list of contacts that we targeted we targeted manually via other uh, other um, ways. Maybe we send them already an email, or maybe we have them in our uh, uh, in LinkedIn contact uh, what contact phase. Uh, maybe Daniel reached out to them via LinkedIn helper, so we can just uh, oh, we can just uh, target them via a LinkedIn campaign. So we can create a matched audience by uploading our list. Uh, LinkedIn gives us a list template and which we can download and uh, populate with uh, what LinkedIn needs from us. It would be first name, last name, uh, email, and maybe company. It will be useful if you can uh, just uh, fill out, let's see, if you can fill out uh, all the requirements from LinkedIn, industry, city, location, uh, LinkedIn offers you plenty of, uh, of information that would be useful for it. But uh, if you have last their name, company, and uh, and uh, maybe location, it will be very useful for LinkedIn. So they will be able to to populate your audience. Afterwards, you just uh, you just upload your list after you populated it. And uh, LinkedIn will say that uh, this pro processing is complete. You can just hit agree and upload. And then you go to your, uh, your campaign, create a new campaign, and select your matched audience. The good thing about this, and now I, I want to mention, you, you, can, uh, you can reach this, to these people with various uh, uh, objectives. I'm not... Uh, uh, going to get into detail with, with this. Uh, the good thing about audience, you find them here. It's your, it's your list of upload, and uh, you can still. This is your. This is our uh, upload, and we can still see here that we are able to choose, still choose some of our uh, require, uh, required required uh, um, um, audience uh, traits. So maybe because we have a small audience, we can just go to United States and see that our target audience is higher. Uh, this kind of uh, retargeting works if your uh, um, list is either from the same the same country, so it won't uh, it won't uh, narrow it down, or either you have uh, let's say one hundred thousand people and uh, you can just uh, play around with uh, with filters and uh, 
and create uh, a nice uh, a nice audience very very well curated let's say so this is the first part uh, i recommend using two different uh, campaigns because you will see how they they perform if your uh, uh, uploaded uh, list won't perform will perform well or bad you just decide if you create localized audience but i also always recommend you just uh, do it on the long term let's say at least uh, two two months so after you created a campaign based on your matched uploaded audience you go again to matched audience and create a lookalike audience so I, what i was saying earlier an expansion of your matched audience people who are similar to what you imported from your crm or from your contact and uh, linkedin will already choose what you what is available for him to choose for it to choose so i have here the list that i imported earlier from our 1700 contacts and i just hit, hit create and do i need to name it first And then I will create it. And again, I will just uh, go in my campaign, create a campaign from scratch. And I'll choose from here, look alike. And here is the one that we just created now, which is building. It will take up to 40, 48 hours. To, to be populated, but uh, after that, it will show you how many how many people it was able to to deliver. So Laura, if I understand find. correctly, what you just did is basically yeah. you uploaded the list that we were targeting, or we knew it's populated with the right customer profile, mm -hmm. uploaded, and now you're waiting for LinkedIn AI to work for about 48 hours to build a list that's really well targeted for us. So it's two steps. First, you just upload that list and LinkedIn will try to find those people uh, with their profiles on LinkedIn. So maybe the first list that we, you uploaded was your, you only had their emails and you targeted them differently. And now we'll try to target them via LinkedIn because maybe we don't have their, uh, their uh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn profiles. Yeah. And after so that, that steps, uh, th that helps with my process of eight plus steps, right? <laughs> of course, yes. Okay. It's, it's a nice step. I think it would be a nice step to just to maybe, it's not 100% that if those people that you are trying to target will be on LinkedIn, but mm -hmm. uh, if they're active, LinkedIn will, uh, will for sure will reach to them and uh, they will see your ad. Yeah. So nice. that's another touch for your, uh, for your workflow. Nice. Yes. So this was uh, the first example. This one with matched audience and then lookalike audience. And then we will um, discuss a bit about creating a manual campaign uh, with a video and matched audience with video. So in case uh, you don't have, let's say, um, a list to start from, you just create uh, using those. You just create a campaign using those filters here. So you just select the location, and then, uh, uh, as I said earlier, you just narrow it based on your uh, audience attributes, based on your interests. So uh, just uh, just choose some industries and the location only for the example. And uh, as your uh, Add format, you just choose video. As I explained to you earlier, it is important to have the video because people who will just be engaged to this will be really interested to your industry, let's say. It's important to be very specific about who do you want to target first, even if you're just trying right now, because afterwards um, you can just uh, create a, an... Um, audience based on people who viewed your video oh, nice. so i will choose here it's a kind of remarketing so you just tried uh broad first and then you can try to narrow it so it's video viewers so basically uh, 
if uh, the LinkedIn sees that someone uh, looked at my video, they figure that they have an interest and they will build that audience based on this kind of people that have an interest in such content. Yes, and you can choose how, how interested they are because you can, uh, if you have, as I said, the, the longer the video you have and the longer the people will, will watch a longer video, you will understand that these people are really interested. So maybe you can just all, you can also start with 25% of the video. Uh, let's see, people who viewed at least 25% of your video ad. If you have a one minute video, 25% could be, could mean a nice amount of video. So maybe if you had the first uh, uh, thoughts in your first 20 seconds, it will be interesting for them. So you can just choose, uh, let's say 50% and uh, they will create based on your uh, past campaigns that used a video, you can choose from here and uh, or from uh, from many of them and just, uh, just create a video based on your audience. And again, LinkedIn will take two days, let's say, to populate that, to, to reach out to the people specifically who were interested in your video. And after that, you can just uh, go again and create a matched audience to expand it again. And uh, sorry, not a match to, to create a lookalike audience based on your uh, on your videos, but it will be here after it will be populated here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Loredana, please help me <laughs> and uh, tell me if I was clear enough. So if I understood correctly, again, yes. um, you, you showed us two examples, one in which uh, we have a list, mm -hmm. uh, maybe we have a list that we called call before, maybe we had the list that uh, of emails, we reached to emails, mm -hmm. bought CRM, uh, and so on. Uh, we take that list and we want to see which one of those um, can be targeted via LinkedIn. So we upload that list to LinkedIn and the first campaign can display the um, ad to the people that we've targeted before. This helps uh, with our uh, also awareness, but also with progressing through the automated prospecting steps. And this again can be done automatically, the tracking and everything through HubSpot. I know that it has an amazing uh, ads uh, feature. Yes. Um, so we can see in there how this is progressing then. Uh, the second option in there is to um, see which other people that look similar in the LinkedIn database to the ones that we have in this list uh, can be addressed with our ads. So which other people match uh, or, or are similar to the ones that we are already targeting to broaden yes. our reach to new leads. Mm -hmm. So this was the first example. And the yes. second example was if we don't have a list, which may be the case sometimes, especially if you start something new or if you haven't been to LinkedIn or, you know, if you're new in the role and so on, um, you take a video and, and video is really simple to make these days, you know, um, and you take a video, you uploaded it to LinkedIn. LinkedIn sees who watches your video they build basically an audience from people that have watched more or less of your video. You select which people you want to target. Do you want to target the people that watched more of your video? Then you select and then LinkedIn builds an audience that is similar to the one that saw your uh, video ad more. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we target them with our ads. Do I yes. understand correctly, Laura? Yes. Yes, you did. Amazing. That's perfect. Thank you. <laughs> you passed my class. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Great. So yeah. um, I'm learning here as well. I'm not especially in LinkedIn ads and, and it's amazing to me as well. So I hope you guys find it uh, interesting as well. So as long as it's an, it creates another touch point with your uh, with your workflow, I think it's a good it's good news for you, right? Especially, yes. especially okay. the first example when we have the matched audience. Yeah, and, and I hear sometimes even some of the business development people that we coach or or even in our team and so on, they say, oh, I exhausted my list, right? This is one of the downturns because you can only use the list so much, like right until you, 
uh, people are tired to hear about you. Like they need about six times to hear about your company to remember it. But then mm -hmm. if it's more than 10 times, it becomes a bit <laughs> too much. So uh, I believe that this kind of um, retargeting and remarketing, uh, especially through LinkedIn, which is such a, a good uh, um, channel for B2B, it, it's, uh, it's amazing. So yeah, thanks Laura for sharing, really appreciate it. No worries. Uh, I uh, just want to add to your uh, thoughts that it's really nice because, as you said, you want to touch these companies or these prospects more. And uh, with LinkedIn, you can only you can you can go to many other ways. Not you can also send a, a sponsored message in their inbox. You can uh, just show up on their on their feed and with a carousel explaining your uh, your services. And you can also share a video or they will just uh, scroll through many other things, not only emails or not things that would probably bother them. Yeah, so, so change every time the, the approach, basically, this is what you're saying, yeah. Yes. That, Again, so, that helps with my eight plus steps. <laughs> so. Yes, so okay. that's, why, that's why I wanted to, to, mm -hmm. uh, to just uh, mention this. Okay, so thank you so much, Laura. If you can now make me the host again, that yes. would be great. Thanks a lot. This this is a great feature. I know every time me and Daniel talk to our customers about lookalike and matched audiences, they always tell us, wow, I didn't know you can actually do that. So guys, we are in 2021, technologically anything is possible. So whatever crosses your mind, one of these tools is going to to help you um, do it. Um, okay, so we are at the end of showcasing tools. Um, now, as a rule of thumb, you know, not all of them are good for everyone. It's just a matter of testing and adjusting and calibrating and most probably to help with those, you know, uh, long-term touches and it, it's a mix. So use a bit of link helper, use crystal, use audiences, uh, find out what works best for you, your company and your target market. And um, then, you know, just uh, let it do the magic. So what's next for you? Um, you can see here, this is our landing page for our next B2B Prospecting Academy. Uh, we are also going to follow up with the recording and we are going to include uh, all the information uh, there as well. I'm also going to type in my email if you are interested into B2B Academy and you don't manage to register directly on the landing, get in touch with me and I can tell you a bit more about it. Mostly the boot camp is about digging even deeper into all these techniques and tools and doing it in a very interactive and customized manner. Uh, we also have a discount, a 50% discount code for everybody who attended today, uh, which is referral 50. Don't worry, we are also going to email it to you. And I guess that's that's about it. Uh, connect with us on LinkedIn. <laughs> uh, write us messages. Put us into a sequence, <laughs> uh, and uh, hopefully we will get to know each other in a more direct manner as well. <laughs>